The hybridization changes that were introduced with update 33 caused a major difference in par scores and pretty much every single score rose across the board. However, this got me realizing that there aren't very many videos showing you how you should adjust your settings so that you can parse correctly. Hello everyone, I'm Pogue for Life and I'm here today to show you how to adjust your settings so that you are able to get the most out of your par score. But first, before we get started with the content, I'd like to take a moment to remind you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It would help me out greatly, especially since I'm just starting. All right, with that out of the way, let's get this going. My first suggestion is to go ahead and swap your buttons within the PlayStation settings. I would swap the R3 button for left on your D-pad. The reason for this is you can bar swap just by moving your thumb a little bit and it makes life a whole lot easier, not only for parsing, but also in content. I don't have the ability to screen capture on my PlayStation yet, so I'll go ahead and link those instructions within the description of this video. So feel free to check that out and I hope that helps you. The second thing I'd like to bring to your attention is changing the settings within the game. So when you go into the start menu, which you open up by pressing the options button on the right hand side of your controller, hit R2 and you go up to options. So once you open that up, you go down to camera. Here we're going to take a look at your screen shake. Your screen shake, I'll show you now, is what causes your screen to bounce up and down when you cause some sort of damage. So we go through and you see my screen shaking like crazy when I hit the keys. That causes a lot of lag and is not helpful for your parse. So what you want to do is come over here, options, camera, and turn your screen shake all the way down. That will help you so that when you do hit your buttons, you'll see now that my screen isn't shaking and reduces the lag when I am parsing. The next important setting to take a look at are your ability timers. So you'll see right now as I'm hitting my skills, there is no sort of timer or anything showing me what I am and am not doing to keep track of my abilities. So what I'm going to do is I hit the start button again, go options, combat, and I'm going to turn the ability bar timers on as well as the ability bar back row on. So what's going to happen now when I hit my timer, so I hit my wall, I hit my degen, and I have bar swap and you can now see at the bottom of the screen that I can see when I need to go and recast my wall of elements which allows me to keep a higher uptime on all of my skills. So that, now that we've gone through all of the settings, I'd like to point out that you should probably go and search for yourself inside of your social. So come over here to my favorite guild and you're going to go and search for yourself so that the computer is only searching for you and you're going to put yourself offline so that you don't have to deal with anybody whispering you or coming to you and it just uh, it saves a lot of hassle by searching for yourself. Now that you've searched for yourself and adjusted all of your settings, you're going to go and take a look at the house that you're parsing in. The goal of this is to go and get to a house that has the least amount of items possible. My house is a horrible example of this because I've started turning it into a guild hall. So as so it's not a great place to go and parse if you're looking to minimize your lag. The next thing you want to take a look at are your skills. So you want to go in and make sure that your bar is set up to where you're able to actually parse as efficiently as possible. So you want to make sure that, first of all, you have the right skills. It's all too common that you get done running a trial or an arena and then you forget to change your skill back to the one that you needed for instance, on a Sork, switching out Bound Aegis for Critical Surge is a common change for single pet Sorks. You know, and so it's important to make sure that you have the correct skills on your bar. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have them set up in something that you can remember and feels natural to you. So everybody has their own playstyle. For instance, I like to have my spammable either as my square or my L1. Some people like to have their spammable as their circle or their R1. It's all about your play style. Set it up how you want it to live. The next thing to take a look at are the passive abilities. So you go into your abilities and let's take a look at the Ardent Flame for instance. So we scroll down and up under the passive abilities we have Combustion, which increases the damage of your burning and poison status effects by 50%. This is huge because it increases 
the Dragonite alone lives on a lot of flame and, and burning damages, so that increases your damage by a ton. You want to make sure that you have all of your passive abilities filled out for the classes that you're going to use. So for instance, I've got all my class abilities filled out, the uh, dual wield for my front and back bar, the ones that actually matter almost, and then the other part, so the destruction staff is filled out, as well as the fighter's guild for the beast trap, the mage's guild for you know inner light, structured entropy, and if you're running um, any of the sigic order or the undaunted, you'll want to make sure that that's taken care of also. Big point there is to just make sure that your passive abilities are actually filled out for the classes that you're going to be using. All right, so next we're going to take a look at our champion points. So the important thing to remember is that there's two different types of champion points. You have your slotted CP, which you ha can only get the bonus and the benefits from if you have them actually assigned to your bar. The other are the passive CP, which are the ones that you get the benefits from as long as you fill out the champion point requirement. So for instance, here on Eldritch Insight, I'm gaining 520 Magicka at all times. I don't have to slot it to my bar. However, I come if I come over here to the Blessed tree, I am not getting anything until I put points into the tree. For, pa for the slotted champion points, when you come in, you have you know Fighting Finesse, Master at Arms, you actually have to slot those to your bar. You do this by pressing triangle and then go, moving across the top and selecting those to assign them to the bar. Once you're done, you have to hit square and confirm those champion points to be committed to the bar. The next thing to take a look at is under the character. So if you're running a Magicka build, you want to have all 64 attribute points inside of the Magicka attribute. If you're running a stamina build, you want to have all 64 points inside of a stamina attribute. I understand that this is now a hybridized system, however it isn't hybridized to an extent that you want to split your Magicka and stamina attributes. Most of the time, the builds are looking at having the Thief Mundus Stone, so make sure that you have the correct Mundus Stone for your build. Now that you've made sure you have the correct Mundus and Attribute points, you want to go check to make sure that you have the correct gear and that your weapons are charged. So when you go in to your inventory, just go and do a double check because it's all too common that you're running a support role as like a Zen's DK or an EC Mag Crow and you go to parse and then you figure out that you actually have the wrong gear on for what you want to run. So make sure that your gear is repaired, that your weapons are charged, and then check that you've got the correct food. So it, again, it's common to switch food between whatever content you're going to run, whether it's solo. And so you want to make sure that you're running the right food and then check your potion. I know it sounds like a silly thing, but the amount of times that I have gone and realized that I have a couple too short potions for what I would want to uh, work on for my pars, or I actually don't even have them slotted because I was running my tank build instead of my mag DK build, you know check that all to make sure that you've got everything correct. As a side note, and I'm not showing the skeleton poly here because there's recently been a major content creator who came out and said that it's actually a superstition and that there used to be an issue where not running the skeleton polymorph would actually decrease your frames per second. However, feel free to go and get the skeleton polymorph. I'm not going to show it here because it's not something that I see as a uh, necessity. However, I'm not going to go and discount any of the other players who are hitting a lot harder than me. You know, I am by f no means the best at the game or anywhere close to it. There are a lot of people that I still am learning from. And so if you'd like to go get the skeleton polymorph, please do so. I'm just not going to show it here. So now that we've got everything set up for preparing to parse, now it's time for the good stuff. So let's start talking about parsing itself. So the most important thing to remember for parsing, aside from the speed, is that you have a rotation. 
and that in order to do well with your rotation, you have to practice it. So instead of just going over and jumping on the 21 mil dummy and seeing how hard you hit and spending five to 10 minutes attacking something when you don't know your rotation, come over here to a six mil or even the 51 mil and just start hitting on it without getting the buffs so that you can get a feel for your rotation. There's no reason to go and spend so long working on hitting the dummy when you don't know your rotation and you're just going to be learning it. Take a couple minutes to come over and practice your rotation prior to testing yourself. So almost every single rotation is going to begin with a pre-buff. Generally within that pre-buff is going to be your, pow your potion. Now there's different ways of increasing the numbers like a magicka dump if you're wearing boss eyes you know, uh, hitting channeled acceleration prior to going into the parse and then switching back to over to beast trap. Whatever you're going to do is your pre-buff. Just make sure that you are ready and again have your potion going because your potion is going to up your weapon and spell damage or you know weapon spell crit whatever it is that you're going to need. Make sure that you have that potion going because that is part of your rotation. So the next part is your button timing. So in general, the easiest way to explain it is there are two cooldowns. One is a light attack cooldown or a heavy attack, a weapon cooldown, and then a skill cooldown. So what that means is you can hit one light attack or one heavy attack in a second, and you can hit one skill in a second. That being said, you can then go and use a light attack and a skill at in that same second because they're on different timers. So what you do is you hit a light attack and then a skill, light attack and then a skill. And then what you're gonna wanna do from there is then go and hit your bar swap after your skill. So what this is gonna do is this is the beginning of animation canceling so that you don't have to go through the entire animation of your light attack or your skill and you get, move, get into the next skill quicker and up your damage. That being said, you do not want to go and hit the button super fast. If you're finding that your damage is not where you want it to be, try slowing down your rotation to make sure you're getting your light attacks off and then slowly increase your, your speed so that you know for sure where the sweet spot is between going too fast with your light attacks and your skills and being too slow to where you're not getting the full potential out of them. After you finished your pre-buff and your opening rotation, you're gonna move on to your normal rotation. This is gonna be where you either have a static rotation or a dynamic rotation. A static rotation means that you are hitting the exact same buttons a specified number of times and it's going to work out pretty much exactly how you know. A dynamic rotation means that you're going through and you are essentially prioritizing your AOEs and your dots and your spammable and knowing when you have to put them up based on what's getting ready to expire. Generally speaking, a dynamic rotation is going to be a higher damage output. However, it takes a lot more practice to actually get the dynamic rotation down and so for this, I would say if you're starting out, see if you can find a static rotation and then work your way into a dynamic rotation. Now for the not fun portion is resource management. So the two forms of resource management aside from the light attack resources that you gain back are your potions and the blessed shard synergy. First we'll talk about the potions. You want to try to keep your potions up as much as possible, meaning as soon as your potion finishes, you want to hit it again. This is because your potion gives you a lot of extra resources as well as all of the benefits of your spell crit, spell damage, or weapon crit and weapon damage, or even extra ultimate gen if you're using a heroism potion. On the opposite side, you have the Bless Shard Synergy. It is great for having a small burst of resources. However, a lot of the parses now and the builds now, like when they're using boss eyes mania, you want to have a lower amount of resources. So if you depend on one of those builds, 
you want to keep your resources low but not so low that you're loot running out so use your blessed shards more sparingly whereas you're using your potions as much as possible the final phase of your parse is going to be your execute phase there are some classes that the execute phase which starts around 20 to 25 percent dependent upon your class is the exact same rotation as your normal rotation this means that you're not going to change anything whatever you were doing before you leave it alone however there's other classes like a night blade where you're going to go and you change your main spammable and you have a lot more damage that you were uh, putting out with your new spammable so that is one of the other things that you have to build into your rotation is your execute phase and so that's going to be something dependent upon your class or your play style and finally we're going to look at uploading your video so on a PlayStation 4 you do not want to screenshot your parse right after your parse go through take your video and then go and take your screenshots and show off your screenshots the reason being if you take a screenshot prior to taking a video on a PlayStation 4 you will not be able to get the video back past the screenshot so that's why you have a lot of times where newer parsers will go and they'll end up with a three second video and not understand why they can't show off their 85k parse as far as actually uploading it to YouTube there's plenty of tutorials out there it's not something that I sh I need to cover or could cover any better than anybody else has already done 30 times over so that's gonna be up to you to find the tutorial that works for you I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of this video if I helped you in any way please like the video share it so that it can help others and then subscribe to my channel like I've said before, I'm just starting out and I'm really trying to grow this up to help more members of the community. So the more eyes that see these videos, the better it is for the community. Thank you all so much for your support. I'll see you all next time.